Good evening to the saints of God and welcome to our Wednesday night uh, Bible study. We're thankful to God that uh, you all are here and look forward to studying God's word tonight uh, with the saints. Uh, before we get into our, our lesson uh, tonight, we will turn it over to uh, Brother Gail Nelson the second G2 uh, for our opening uh, prayer. So engineers, go ahead and unmute Brother Gail Nelson the second. Thank you. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for allowing us to wake up this morning to study another portion of your word. We just thank you for everything that you've given us, everything that you're going to do for us. And we pray that we can be consistent. We pray that we can continue to love you and keep our focus on you, dear God. And we pray that we can continue to bring more and more souls to Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Brother Gail. And also tonight, and it ties into the lesson, we want to uh, turn the floor over to Brother Richard Nelson V uh, to lead us in an opening song. I know obviously uh, on Bible study, we typically just jump right into the lesson, uh, but the song has tremendous meaning to what we want to talk about tonight. So at this time, we turn it over to Brother Richard Nelson V uh, for an opening song. Please, uh, as you all know, we are, everybody's muted uh, to prevent any background noise, but sing along wherever you are. The song, the lyrics will be on the screen. You'll pick up the melody and the harmony rather quickly. Brother Richard Nelson, the fifth, the floor is yours. Amen. All right. So our, our opening song this evening is This World Is Not My Home. The lyrics will, will be on the screen as usual. Once again, that's This World Is Not My Home. Time. This world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I can't feel like home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then, Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. They're all expecting me, and that's one thing I know. My Savior pardoned me, and now I will go. I know he'll take me through, though I yeah, we can, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then, Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Dressed up in glory land, we'll live eternally. The saints on every hand are shouting victory. Their songs of sweetest praise strip back from heaven's shore. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, you know I got no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then, Lord, what would I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. We're thankful to God for G2 and Ricky the Fifth. Uh, for uh, leading us in our opening prayer and our opening song uh, tonight. So uh, when we think about the songs and the impact of songs as well, we learn through songs. And as we think about the word of God tonight, let's look at Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16. Colossians, the third chapter, now that we've had a word of prayer and an opening song, uh, that song, this world is not my home, will come back to us. We'll come back to that shortly. 
Colossians 3, verse, in beginning at verse 16, if we uh, look at it in, in, in context, the Bible says, let the word of God, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing. That word admonish means to urge, almost to the point of warning. Admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. So singing is accompanied uh, by the melody made in our hearts, and we sing a cappella to the Lord. The Bible says in verse 17, and whatsoever you do, in word or deed, do all, do everything, in other words, in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. So as we think about the, the songs we sing, we just sang, this world is not my home. The lyrics in that song, I'm just a passing through. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? We sing another song, Camping Toward Canaan's Land. Uh, every day I'm camping toward the land of Canaan. That word, you know, Canaan's land, as we think about the promised land, we, we talked about uh, Joshua leading the children of Israel over across the Jordan River into the promised land, the land of Canaan, if you will. And so wh why, do, why do we sing that song today? Not because we're following Joshua, we're following Jesus into the promised land where, where Joshua led the people was a place of rest. It was a promised land, but it was not heaven. Uh, it was not eternal. It was not heaven itself. We follow Jesus, the Yehoshua, if you will, Jehovah saves. Uh, and so we camp toward Canaan's land every single day. So we sing that song and we need to make sure as we sing these songs, we recognize the context. We sing another song. I know somebody's listening. Though a pilgrim or stranger, two words we're gonna talk about tonight. Though a pilgrim or stranger or beggar I be, as here I go traveling on. So these are just three examples, class and fellow, and fellow saints, and we welcome all visitors. I forgot to mention that earlier. We welcome all who are visiting with us uh, tonight. But as we think about traveling, this world's not our home. Don't get too comfortable. We're camping toward Canaan's land. We're living with a purpose in mind. I know somebody's listening as we pray to God the Father in Jesus' name. We recognize we're strangers and pilgrims. Let's get into that. Last week, we talked about a perspective on how we live. Uh, we looked at 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 17. And let's run over there just very quickly for time's sake. Uh, you need to have your Bibles ready in Bible study, because uh, I just can't put every single scripture on the screen for you. I need you to work. Work with me by your attention, but also work by looking at these scriptures and turning in your own Bible so you can see it. In 1 John chapter 2, toward the back of the book, Beginning at verse 15, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Verse 17, and the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God, but he that doeth the will of God, that he refers to all mankind, not just the male factor or the male gender, but he that doeth the will of God, abideth forever. So we focused last week on not loving the world, and we understand the world is defined as not as mankind. We want to love mankind. It's not the earth. We want to you know, love and appreciate what God has created. So we're talking about immorality. Don't love immorality. Don't love materialism. Do not love and fall in love with your accomplishments. Look at me. Look at all that I've done. Don't fall in love with that. Easy come, easy go. We talked about the world of sin on last week. Ephesians chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. Run over there. I want to do this very quickly. Ephesians 2, verse 1 and 2. Just a quick recap of last week. And he, you hath he quickened, made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins. So outside of Christ, until you have obeyed the gospel, we're dead in our sins. Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. So at one time, Paul is saying, you lived and the flesh was your guide. You were motivated by what you can get. 
the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. That's all that's in the world. So Paul is saying to us, don't fall in love with this world of sin. Paul also, I mean, John also mentions in 1 John 5 and verse 19, the very next scripture on your, on your screen. Turn over there. 1 John 5 and verse 19. Look at what the Bible says there. Since this is review, I'm, hey, I'm picking up the pace a little bit so we can get into our, our lesson text. But last week, we talked about the domain of Satan. This world we live in is influenced by Satan, is influenced by the devil. Is there hope for us? Of course there's hope. I'm not spewing negativity. I'm letting you know the facts. Satan wants us to go to hell. He does not want you to be saved. He does not want you or me to obey the gospel. Satan would rather just have mankind just fight it out and lose their soul. First John 5 and verse 19, and we know, and it say maybe, and we know that we are of God and the whole world lieth in wickedness. That's not a pessimistic view. It's a, it's a view on the temporal, temporal, T-E-M-P-O-R-A-L, Temporal, also you get the derivative, temporary. This world is not our home. We are just passing through. And so the context of 1 John 5 and verse 19, uh, John is saying to the brothers and sisters in Christ, we know we are of God. There's a home prepared where the saints abide, just over in the glory land. Another song we sing, another beautiful song. So we know this world is domain of Satan. God created the world but this world is not meant to last forever. And so we all just also understand, as we mentioned last week, that this world we're talking about is a morally evil system under the influence of Satan, opposed to God and Christ's kingdom. First John 4 and 4. I want the Bible to break it down for us. Now, there's some great things we do in this world. There's beautiful places to visit, but Jesus lets us know plainly. What is it? If you gain the whole world and lose your soul, what have you profited? And so tonight we want to just encourage you. First John 4 and 4, the Bible says, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you. He's talking to Christians now. Those who've obeyed the gospel that have been baptized into Christ, added to the body, the church of Christ. Let me read it again so you get the context. He's not saying this to the whole world, anybody that has breath. Ye are of God, little children, have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So we live in this world, treat people with respect, do right, obey the laws of the land, so long as they don't conflict with the word of God, Acts 5, verse 29. Write that down, Acts 5 and 29. We ought to obey God rather than man, is what that really says. But don't get so comfortable in thinking that we're going to be here forever. So that's the context that we spring from to go into our lesson tonight. So what are we doing? We're just passing through. To help us uh, hasten on a little bit, our lesson text tonight comes from 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 1 and 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 11 and 12. Some key words that uh, as Brother Richard Nelson V sang the song, This World Is Not My Home, there was a couple of things, a couple of words he used. Stranger and pilgrim, Take a look at it. Peter writes in 1 Peter 1 and 1, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers. Whenever you study the Bible, especially for our new babes in Christ, always know who's speaking, what are they speak, to whom are they speaking, and what are they speaking about. Let me give you that again. When you study the Bible, know who's speaking, to whom they are speaking, and what they are speaking about. Peter is speaking to the strangers, he's talking to the saints that were scattered through Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. This area known as Asia Minor, modern day Turkey, geographically speaking, in case you were wondering. And so Peter is writing to the saints, but he calls them strangers. Let's go to chapter two. It's on your screen for your convenience and to help, help us with time tonight. First Peter two, beginning at verse number 11, having your, who's speaking? Peter. To whom is he speaking? The saints of God, scattered throughout Asia Minor, scattered throughout modern-day Turkey, having your conversation, that word conversation means lifestyle, having your lifestyle honest among the Gentiles. That word Gentile here by translation, honest among the pagans, honest among those who were not Christians. We who are Christians, people watch us, people listen to us. 
If you walk around cussing everybody out, you walk around being dishonest, if you walk around uh, just, just being phony, a hypocrite, people will say, I thought you were a Christian. Having your conversation, your lifestyle, honest. In other words, for honesty is transparency. What you see is what you get. Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, the pagans, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, that, that they, excuse me, they may buy your good works. He's talking about when you live in such a way that people can see you straight up, open, honest, these pagans buy your good works, which they shall behold, which they shall see. Glorify God in the day of visitation. Now that word visitation, very interesting word because it can, you can use it contextually. The word visitation comes from the same Greek word. I put it on the screen, uh, not to just use big words, but I want you to get context. The word visitation means it comes from the same Greek word episkopos, where we get elder and bishop, overseer. So when God comes to oversee his people, see what Peter just did? And Peter was a shepherd. Peter was an elder as well. So the elder, talking about the chief shepherd, when he, when the day of visitation comes, and that's twofold visitation, not just the day of judgment. He's talking about repentance in this context. He's talking about salvation by grace in this context. Let's read it again with Episcopos in mind. This is where you get into word studies. It's, it's kind of exciting to me. Having your lifestyle, honest among the pagans, the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, when you influence them in such a way, they can glorify God in the day the shepherd takes over their life too. What day is that? That's a day of salvation, which prepares us for judgment. Peter in this limited context is not talking about when Jesus comes back again, because pagans, those outside of Christ, don't have hope. When Christ comes back, you have to obey the gospel while you're yet alive. So Peter is saying, if you live, saints, strangers, pilgrims, in an open and honest way, you can lead people to Christ. Got some good news to share with you all. That young man that led prayer tonight, Gail Nelson II, by his example, has been evangelizing, and he led a young lady to Christ. And we're going to talk about that later on. So when Christ comes and he takes over your life, when the shepherd becomes, when we as sheep that have gone astray now has Jesus, have Jesus Christ, as our shepherd, he, he visits us the day of visitation. And guess what? When we get into Christ through grace and so we're saved, we then are prepared for when Christ comes again. You got to get into Christ, add it to the body of Christ so you can be prepared for when Jesus Christ comes again. I love the fact that Peter, a shepherd, uses the Episcopos to let us know that we need to find the good shepherd, get through the door and become children of God while we yet have the opportunity. So Paul, Peter says in verse 11, I knew there was something missing at the top of that screen. I read verse 12, let me give you verse 11. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims. Peter is pleading with the saints. I plead with you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. So he's saying, you live in such a way as Christians, you can influence others to repent of their sins and obey the gospel. Paul, Peter is saying rather, I'm pleading with you saints, live right. Because you can either lead someone to the gospel or you can lead someone to hell. You need to make the decision tonight. Having your conversation, I'll read it again in full context now that you see verse 11. Having your conversation, your lifestyle honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they don't, people won't understand. You obey the what? The gospel? You're added to the church. How many churches are there? Only one, mama. One church? You can go to any church you want to go to. We're all the same. We're all going to the same heaven. Jesus didn't say that. Man will say that. They will speak against you as evildoers. But they may by your good works, which they shall behold or see. Glorify God in the day of visitation. You can lead them to Christ by the way you live your life. So Peter, let me go back. In verse 11, refers to the saints, the Christians, scattered throughout Asia Minor as strangers 
and pilgrims. The word pilgrim, there's your Greek word. Why do we use it in the Greek? For the benefit of our new Christians and those, uh, it's just the original language of the New Testament. And sometimes it gives us deeper context because you can say a tree and you think about just something that's planted that may bear fruit. Or you can say he died on the tree. You're talking about the cross. So context is important as we study God's word. So the Greek word for, for pilgrim, uh, periepidemos, uh, which means sojourning, traveling in a strange place, a foreigner. The New Testament reference for pilgrim is a reference to heaven as the native country, our home. People say, I'm a native Floridian. I'm a native Ohioan. I'm from Ohio. I live in Florida now, so, uh, but the bottom line is, think about where are you from? We are in this world, but not of this world. So the New Testament reference to heaven as our native country, one who sojourns on earth, so we're just traveling through. This world is not my home. Don't just sing the song, know what it means. So one who sojourns or, or just, or just kind of passing through here on this earth, you see the icon or the caption up on the top left of your of your screen, it's a path. Where are, you, where are you going? Have you ever taken a trip and you're going down? I've driven down some dirt roads where you don't know where you're going. So you need some, you know, back in the day we used maps, paper maps, believe it or not. So you fold that map out, you highlight where you're going or draw on it, uh, if you will. Uh, now, we, then we had navigation systems. Now you got Waze and all kinds. They used to have, you know, just GPS. So everybody uses some so they know where they're going. So in your life spiritually, where are you going? The Bible should be your guide, the word of God, not pagan man, not opinion, not even your family, because your family can lead you astray. So this native country of heaven, one who sojourn, sojourns here on earth or just travels through, so of Christians. We read in 1 Peter 1 and 1 already. He calls them, I beseech you, brethren. He's talking to them in 1 Peter 1 and 1. Go back to that very quickly. I'll turn to Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers the sojourners scattered throughout Pontus Galatia in the various places. But also in talking to the patriarchs, the Hebrew writer, Hebrews chapter 11, Hebrews the 11th chapter. And we'll take a look at verse 13. Look at Hebrews 11 and verse 13, if you have your Bibles. Talking about the patriarchs, those fathers, if you will. These all died in faith. Hebrews 11 and verse 13 class. Not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. They died in faith. They believed the promises of God. Not only that they were faithful, but they also confessed, recognized, acknowledged by translation they understood and acknowledged. So when people say, why don't you get mad and why don't you just go cuss her out? It's bigger than that. <laughs> it's above me. <laughs> the way I live my life, the reason I won't go crazy when people talk about me or try to get some fleshly revenge is I'm on a path. I know where I'm going. I wanna go home. And I'm not gonna let petty foolishness, gossip, murmuring, complaining, seeking to get my own way no matter what caused me to get off the path and miss the way home. Amen, saints. And so they confessed, they recognized, acknowledged, and spoke to it that they were strangers, just foreigners. That word stranger can also be translated alien. So we're not from here. That's not, those aren't bad terms. Actually, are terms of endearment, spiritually. So no one ever frown up and say, I'm not an alien. I'm not a stranger. I want to be right at home. That's the problem with many of us. That's the problem with many Christians. They want to conform to the world, fit in, sound like, look like, and even act like the world. And you, we lose our distinction. We lose our peculiar nature. It's okay to be different, so long as you're different for the right cause. And Christ was different. What do I mean by different? He was peculiar. He was obedient until death, and we ought to do the same. And so as we think about pilgrimage, to describe Christians whose final citizenship, get it, our, our home country, heaven, where we want to go, our final citizenship is in heaven, and who are regarded as temporary dwellers on this earth. We are here temporarily. Philippians chapter 3 and the verses 20. Philippians, the third chapter in verse 20. 
for our conversation, Paul says, who's speaking? Paul. To whom is he speaking? The Christians at Philippi. One church, different locations. Not denominations, one church of Christ. One body of Christ, located in different geographic places. That's for the benefit of our new converts. Listen, for our conversation, our lifestyle is in heaven. Y'all get that? Our, what, our eternal goal. The reason I live the way I live. Train my children the way we train them. Love my family. The reason you love your husband, love your wife respectively. Because you want to make it to heaven. For our conversations in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, I hope you're getting this. My focus is heaven. The end goal is heaven. Why do I live the way I live? Because I want to make it home. And you're not going to get in the way. I want to help. And you know what's beautiful about that? I don't want to, I'm not going to run over you. I'm not going to seek to hurt you. I want to take you with me because I want to go home. And here's the beautiful part. There's plenty of room. There's plenty of room. We don't have to fight. It doesn't have to be comp competitive. Let's make it there together. The beauty of evangelism, the beauty of sharing God's word, letting people know this world is not our home. So we think about this world, and we've mentioned it already, but I'll go ahead and put it on the screen for your benefit. The pagan, pilgrims in a pagan land, if you will, are just passing through a pagan, you know, heathen also. You know, some of those words may seem a little offensive, but that's exactly what it is. If you're not a Christian, you're, you're a sinner. If you're not a Christian, you're a pagan. If you're not a Christian, you're a heathen. You don't want to be called a heathen? Obey the gospel. You can become a Christian. A person who does not acknowledge your God. Someone motivated by desires for sensual pleasures. We're motivated by the world. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And so what's some evidence of a pagan land? See if this makes sense to you. Do you recognize this? Atheism. Some people don't believe in God at all. Some people believe in themselves so much. Humanistic. Humanism is on the increase. Marriage confusion. You can just get in and out of marriage. It doesn't matter. It does matter. The value of life. Well, you just get an abortion. Life does matter. God created God giving the life, God taking away life. Homosexuality, same-sex marriage. People say, well, you can't tell me who I can love. Well, God tells us what, how marriage is defined. God didn't leave that to man. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. In Genesis 1, 26 and 27, Genesis 1, 26 and 27, God created him, created man. He created him, them, male and female. And then we get into Genesis chapter 2. God saw that man was alone. God created one man, brought her to the man. The word one man means from man. Doesn't mean a woman is inferior. And then Adam said, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called one man because she was taken from man. God took woman from not his hand to be hit, not his back to be uh, inferior, not his foot to be stepped on, but from his rib. God created woman, designed, built woman. In the Hebrew language, that word God created means he built, he designed woman, a beautiful creation from Adam's rib. Where's the rib? On the side of man. So how in the world, and to get that phrase, how in the world, I, I know how man tries to dilute that, confuse it, twist it. Kids growing up thinking, you know, mama gonna marry mama. How, that, that's not how God works. And let me say something on a very adult level. You just look at electricity. You have something called a male adapter and a female adapter. You all put that together when you get home. Think about that. Can't plug something in. I'm just keeping this on an adult level now. You know, this is adult Bible class, a male female adapter. See, you ain't getting any light with a male and a male. I'm just put it, let me move on because this is getting too adult right now. Amen. Y'all know what I'm talking about. So, evidence of a pagan land, ridiculing Christian faith. Oh, y'all just old folk. Y'all just old folky stuff. Removing God from public discussion. People don't want to talk about religion, it makes people mad. So, brothers and sisters, this evidence, and this is not exhaustive and by any means, we live in a world where all this stuff on the screen is not exception, it's not the exception, it's the norm. And so people will look at you and say, you don't believe in that? Oh, you're, you're, you, you, don't, you don't believe anybody can marry whoever they want? Well, the Bible says. And that's what, people won't like you for that. That doesn't mean you, you gotta respect everybody, but you don't have to believe them. You don't have to obey trust in God. We're pilgrims. We're strangers in a pagan land. So then how shall we live? Well, brother, this is confusing and not confusing. This is, makes sense biblically, but this is uncomfortable. Brother Nelson, 
I want to be friends with everybody. All right, you want heaven to be your home? Do what God says. Well, I got people I work with that uh, believe in some of this stuff. I'm sure, uh, me too. I will respect them. I will treat them with, with respect. I'll use Christian hospitality. Jesus sucked with sinners. He ate with tax collectors and sinners, but he did not compromise what he believed. That's the key, because you can win them over to Christ. I'm not going to go into work and say, everybody here that's a homosexual is going to hell. I need to show the love of Christ. Just like I with all the liars and all the drunkards and all the other sins. I'm not going to take one sin and make it so big and all the other sins are, well, those are okay sins. All sin will lead us down a path, not to heaven, but a path to destruction. So we need to love everybody. That does not mean condone, compromise, or give in. That means lead them to Christ. Amen, saints. Y'all hit me back on an electrical analogy. I don't know if y'all got that. Living in a pagan land, adult hit me back. Nobody else. Kids, y'all just close your ears. Living in a pagan land, what should, what should pilgrims do? See, if we're pilgrims and strangers, here, let's go through this very quickly. We got a few scriptures to look at. The time's moving faster than me. Uh, if, in, in, a, in a pagan land, if we're just traveling through, we should hope for the grace to come. I can't exhaust all of this, but this is all based on 1 Peter. Look at verse 1, 1 Peter chapter 1, excuse me, 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 13. If we're pilgrims, how should we live? I want to help us and encourage us. We're in the midst of a global pandemic and people are losing their absolute minds. So how should we live? Our hope is for the grace to come. Some people are more concerned about a vaccine for COVID-19. Certainly we hope, trust, and pray that something is, uh, is, is created that doesn't harm man, but that can help man stay safe. No problem there. But is that the greatest issue we have? The greatest issue is still sin, the infection of sin. We're all going to die of something. The greatest need is for the salvation of man. So there's things we can get that can make our lives more comfortable. But don't you ever forget about heaven. So in living in a pagan land, we as pilgrims, just traveling through, just passing through, must hope for the grace to come. First Peter 1, verse 13, quickly. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, tighten up your mind, stay focused, be more diligent, be sober. Be sober means be in control and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So what, what can we do? And for time's sake, I can only read maybe one or one of these scriptures. I got a few of them here. I want everybody to write down those scriptures. We hope for the grace to come. In some cases, I put two scriptures there for each one. Let's keep going for, so we can finish it. Be holy, children of God. Look at verse 14 and 15. We're still in 1 Peter chapter 1 for time's sake. 14 and 15, as obedient children. So first of all, we need to tighten up our minds. Be more focused. Be more deliberate. The word is intentional. Be intentional. Don't be wishy-washy. Well, I don't know. We don't, have, we don't we have time for that. Who wants to be on a team with somebody wishy-washy? Who wants to marry? Say, I'm looking for a wishy-washy woman. Like what man's going to say, I'm looking for a wishy-washy wife? What woman's going to say, I'm looking for a wishy-washy man? Tighten up. Tighten up the loins of your mind. Think about girding the loins. It's really like a belt. That's the, that's the analogy that Peter is using. So tighten up. Be holy children of God, verse 14 and 15. As obedient children, not fashioning, not acting like, like modeling yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance. Verse 15, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in some, no, in all manner of conversation. What Peter is saying is, once you tighten up your mind, then act right. Be holy in all manner of conversation. That's not speech he's talking about. He's talking about our lifestyle. Write down those other scriptures to mate with it. Time won't permit me to exhaust all of those. And so once we do that, tighten up our minds, be, live as obedient children in all manner of our lives, then we love one another fervently. Stay in chapter one, drop down to verse 22. Other scriptures are there for additional reinforcement and reference. First Peter chapter one, verse 22. But the word of the Lord, endureth forever. Verse 22, I'm sorry. Seeing ye have purified your souls and obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned love. Unfeigned means sincere, genuine love of the brethren. See that. 
see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. When you tell somebody how you, or I'll do, if you need something, let me know. Mean that. Mean that. So if somebody asks you and you really need something, say, if you need something, brother, let me know. If you need something, call them and say, brother, I'm so glad you said that. Because I could use A, B, or T. Don't call me back and say, brother, I need a million dollars. I could really use that. Well, you won't get that tonight. But if you need prayer, let's, let's talk. You want to talk about dealing with your anger? Let's talk about it. Too often, Christians, pilgrims, sojourners, we don't lean on one another enough. It's okay to cry. Talk to each other. The Bible is saying, you pilgrims, you strangers, love one another with a pure heart fervently. And how does love behave? The word manifest means to reveal. Love must manifest itself with deeds. So if you love me, call me. You love me, listen to me. Now, if you love God, we love God. Open up and share what you need with others. Say, brother, can I just talk to you? Amen. Love one, another with a, love one another with a pure heart, fervently. How else should we live in this world? We need to desire the word of God. First Peter chapter one is hit verse 23, the very next verse. Look at it. Being born again, that means being baptized. Going to the watery grave of baptism. We're born physically into this world. And when the water breaks, a baby, a child comes into this world. When the water breaks, when you go down in the watery grave of baptism, you come up a new babe in Jesus Christ. You don't know everything, but you stay in God's word and you grow, you learn, and then you do. Being born again, not a corruptible seed. So this is not a physical birth, but of incorruptible. This is a spiritual birth by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. So we should desire continuously the word of God. The reason we as members of the body of the church of Christ Stay in the Bible and let it be our guide because the word of God can lead us home. You, I'm sure you've used on your phone Waze or Google Maps. I'm sure back in the day, some of you had a Magellan or some kind of little uh, GPS navigation system, whatever you used. Some of you old schoolers have used a map to get from point A to point B. Well, if you want to make it to heaven, you need to you desire the word of God. It's the only road map navigation system GPS, God's plan of salvation. The only way you're going to make it to heaven is to desire the word of God. So how should we live? So tighten up your mind, one through five, quickly. Tighten up your mind. Be obedient children. Love fervently, genuinely. Desire the word of God. And we need to make sure, let people know. Because oftentimes, the only time you hear from some folks is when things are bad. Y'all pray for me. and Nothing wrong with that. Please don't misunderstand me. We want you to submit your request to God. We're going to do that tonight. But have you just, have you uh, taken the time? If you really just look at yourself, don't look at anybody else. Gail needs to look at Gail. I'm Gail, by the way. Do I talk more about what's wrong? Or do I break down and say, I'm just thankful to God for today. I'm thankful to God for my kids. I'm thankful to God for my wife. I'm thankful to God for a job to provide and support the Lord's church. I'm thankful to God for my help. I'm thankful to God to help. So start doing that more than I don't know. Y'all pray for me because ah, this is getting this rough. I mean, when does COVID go in? Perspective. Proclaim the praises of God. First Peter chapter two. First Peter, the second chapter, beginning at verse nine. Look at this. Proclaiming the praises of God. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar, distinctive people that ye should show forth. In other words, make evident, manifest the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Verse 10, but in which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. So we more than anybody have a reason to say, thank you, Lord. But if you're the one who wakes up and it's like, oh, here we go again. Who wants to be around you? Tighten your mind. Be obedient children. Love with the first, love genuinely. Desire the word of God as I use the word of God as our God, our lamp and our light. 
proclaim the praises of God. This is how pilgrims and sojourners need to live. And when we do that with a tightened mind, obedient children, loving sincerely, desiring the word of God, using the word as our guide, proclaiming the praises of God, then we can glorify God with good works. Because now it's not an act, it's real. First Peter chapter two and verse 12. Having your conversation, having your lifestyle, honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. When God brings salvation, when God allows men and women everywhere through the lifestyle of others to come to know Christ, God is glorified. We don't have to say, well, you know what? I did, I've done all this. I preached a thousand lessons. I've taught so many Bible classes. This person got baptized. That person got baptized. Wonderful. Thank the Lord. God is to be glorified. We can save people's souls. Living this way as pilgrims, we can lead folks to Christ. I called a young man today, and I just told him, and I want to teach him the gospel. I just called him and left him a message. I said, you know, I love you. God loves you too. We don't agree spiritually. He believes in Jesus, but I've heard him teach. And that some of the things that are taught are not consistent with the, with the gospel of Jesus Christ. But I planted a seed today. Haven't heard back, but I'm gonna call him again. Do what you can. Think about somebody that you can convert, you can teach, but it all starts with how you live. If you're the one complaining on the job, you come back tomorrow saying, you complain every day. Every time at lunch, here, here she come, the complainer, sister complainer, brother, brother doubter, and sister complainer, send it to lunchroom. How you doing? Uh, I don't know. And here come brother doubter. How you doing? Man, I don't know either. But let me, won't you come to church with me? I don't want to go to church with, what do you, where do you go? <laughs> Miss Sister Doubt, or sister complainer, and brother doubt. We have an impact on people. And guess what? We talked about this just about every week. Brother Rick touched on it. I've been touching on it. If, you, if we do all these things, we can then patiently, now get that? That word patience translated perseverance. We can persevere through hardship. Go to 1 Peter chapter 3. We're going to deal with verse 17. <clears throat> 1 Peter chapter 3, beginning at verse 13. We're dropping verse 17. Almost there, class. 1 Peter chapter 3, and beginning at verse 13. And who is he that will harm you if ye be followers of that which is good? But, but and if ye suffer for righteousness sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. Don't you worry. Stop worrying. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always. If you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you of a, a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Stay humble. Nobody graduates from Christianity. Stay humble but be ready to give an answer. Tighten up your mind. Sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Having a good conscience, verse 16, having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as of, as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse you, accuse your good conversation, your lifestyle in Christ. Oh, people are gonna talk about you. Is that guy for real? What is he all about? What's that sister all about? Miss Holy Roller, who is she? You will be talked about, but you need to endure patiently hardship. Verse 17, for it is better if the will of God be so that ye suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. So if we know that we all will suffer, how would you choose to suffer? Everybody likes you and we all go to hell and you suffer eternally or you live for Christ doing his will obeying his word, recognizing our, pil our pilgrimage, recognizing we are just simply sojourners and suffering for the cause of Christ. You decide. So as we think about where we want to go, there's no shortcuts to heaven. John chapter 10, beginning at verse nine, Jesus says, I am the door. How do, what do you use a door for? Entrance. You go in and out, but this is a one-way one -way trip. This is a one-way path. I am the door by me. If any man, black, white, rich or poor, it doesn't matter. 
by me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. You got to get in Christ and shall go in and out and find pasture. Jesus saying, this is where you can find peace. I came into the world. Jesus we're talking about. Became flesh. Was obedient until the end. Until his death. Shedded his blood. Purchased the church of Christ. He was buried. He rose again the third day. He was back on the right hand of God. Jesus makes a comparison. Verse 10. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come. Jesus speaking here. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. The only way you and me can have the, an abundant life is to be in Christ. He says, I am the door. Like a sheep that comes in and out of a pasture, that in and out. Don't get that confused in terms of you can go to heaven and you can come back out. He's talking about sheep. Because John 10, he's talking about I'm the good shepherd. A pasture where sheep find their nourishment, where sheep find their safety. A pasture has a shepherd. There's nourishment. And so we're talking, that's, those are illustrations. And so Jesus in John 10, as the good shepherd says, just like a sheep can go in and out of a pasture, we as Christians find our habitation in the Lord's church. And with other sheep in this fold, this body, this church of Christ, get to know one another, lean on one another, and know that we have pasture, green pastures, because we're fed by the word of God. No shortcuts to heaven just in case you missed it, in John chapter 14 and verse 6, the same Jesus says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Brothers and sisters, visiting friends, especially those that are not members of the body of the Church of Christ, you can't take a shortcut to heaven. Now, many times people can find, you see a pathway, you can go from point A to point B, and someone says, I know a shortcut. There's even in some freeways, there's a call, something called a bypass. You're not going to bypass Christ and make it to heaven. You must be in Christ. God has a plan for man. The GPS, God's plan of salvation. You must hear, hear, the, hear and believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel is the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Do you believe tonight that Jesus died for your sins, that he was buried? And rose again the third day. Do you believe that in his, when he shed his blood, he purchased the church? When Jesus says in Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18, and upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. If you have one car, it is probably parked outside. If you have more than one, you'd say, well, they are parked outside. Jesus marked down the scripture again. I quoted it for time's sake. In Matthew 16 and verse 18, Jesus told Peter, now thou art Peter, you're a small stone, but upon this rock, upon the fact that you confess me to be the son of God, upon this rock, I, Jesus speaking, will build my church, a possessive pronoun showing ownership. I, Jesus, will build my church in the gates of Hades, Hell cannot, will not have victory over the church of Christ. The gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. One church, one head, one way, one path. You believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, you got to hear and believe it. You got to repent of your sins. Repentance means just to change your mind. I no longer want to live out here doing any old thing. I want to do right by God. I want to use his word as my guide. I want to get on the path to heaven. You confess Christ to be the son of God. And upon that confession, as we did on yesterday, we opened the doors of the church building. A young lady by the name of Ashley Ramirez, who's with us tonight, is now a sister in Christ. She was baptized into Christ. Her sins are washed away. She rose up and now she lives. Her conversation is as a Christian sister. Ashley Ramirez. The angels in heaven rejoice. The Bible tells us in Luke chapter 15, the angels in heaven rejoice over one sinner that repenteth, then over 99 that need not repentance. So we're thankful to God through the conversation, the lifestyle of Brother Gail Nelson II, G2. Share the gospel. She's been studying with us. She's been with us on these Zoom meetings, been with us in worship service. And last Sunday, Gail gave me her number. I called her. 
said, you have any questions? He said, no, Gail answered all my questions. I'm ready to, I'm ready to be baptized. And yesterday, Brother Steve Hogan met us down at the building. Brother Lyman Baker, one of our deacons, was there as well. And this young lady was baptized into Christ. And so as we typically do, saints of God, uh, and it's, isn't it beautiful to see that beautiful auditorium? It almost chokes me up. We introduce to all the saints of God, uh, our new sister in Christ, Sister Ashley Ramirez. God bless you, Sister Ashley. We love you. We're here every step of the way. You got a big old family now. Your family got a whole lot bigger. Uh, and it's a beautiful thing to be a child of God. At this time, that concludes our lesson for tonight. We won't get into announcements just yet. Uh, we'll go ahead and minimize that. Let's stop, let's stop sharing for just a minute. Well, let's go to uh, Brother Rick. Uh, let's unmute Brother Rick. I hope he made, he was having some difficulty getting into the class tonight. Uh, but if Brother Rick's there, go ahead and unmute him, Brother Rick, and let's see if we can deal with any questions or comments in the chat. Yes, I, yes, I am, Doc. Remember, the, uh, the IT engineer lives with me. <laughs> there you go. That's, it's good to have a, uh, those Nelsons are good to have around. <laughs> Check in the chat. Uh, just right now, just from Brother Stevens, thank you for your prayers. I'm feeling much better. Well, that, thank God for that. Thank God for that. We're glad that uh, he's doing better. We have many that are uh, afflicted at this time, uh, health-wise, yes. maybe physical or spiritual. Uh, so we certainly continue to pray for all of them. Any other uh, questions or comments, Rick? Uh, we certainly encourage uh, questions and not, so we can answer them uh, as quickly as we can with the time we have. No questions yet, just another thank you from Nigel Stevens for prayers for his family member and getting better. Excellent, excellent. That's uh, wonderful. Another one, thank you for everyone. And uh, th it says, thank you for everyone's welcomes. Amazing family. Uh, welcome home, Sister Ashley. Looking forward to meeting you. Oh, that's good. So our Sister Ashley, uh, uh, just saying thank you to everybody. And what we will do after we close out of the class, once we go through a few announcements uh, and we uh, have our closing uh, prayer, uh, we will, everybody stay around. Uh, and sh open up your video. We don't need to see everybody's name unless you're at work and you just listen in and we appreciate that. Don't lose your job tonight. We're not trying to get that done. <laughs> Share your video if you can and Ashley stick around sis because we can, everybody, you can see your family. Uh, and so we appreciate everybody. Uh, you just stand, stand for a minute and welcome my new sister in Christ, uh, sister Ashley. And I've got a lot of comments I see popping up Rick in terms uh -huh. of- Welcome and ask you to the family. That's beautiful. So here's our first question. Uh, as a pilgrim, how should my attitude be towards the leader of our land? What does the scripture say I should act towards decisions that I don't agree with? <laughs> I was waiting for one like that. <laughs> <laughs> so the question is, what should my attitude be? Yes, especially toward the leader of our land. Well, uh, I think keep that's a mind. reference to the president. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Acts chapter 5 and verse 29. Uh, we can't exhaust it tonight, Rick, but uh, one of the things that's important, uh, Acts 5 and verse 29 uh, teaches us uh, who we truly should obey. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather uh, than man. Uh, and so just recognize who the ultimate authority is. Romans chapter 13 lets us know that, you know, again, there are rulers and other pe people in authority. We need to understand that authority is there for a reason, but when people abuse power and people lie, in no way does the Bible tell us we should support a lie, but we need to always be mindful of disrespecting uh, mankind and everybody has a soul. Even the president has a soul. Absolutely. Uh, again, there's many things I do, not, I do not agree with, but one of the things that's very important is do all you can do uh, to lead people to Christ. And don't let anybody, including a president, cause you to lose your soul by fussing and complaining. Just be, be the example as Jesus was, as what Jesus had to deal with some pretty uh, rough rulers, Rick. But what did he do? He, did. he spoke the truth. He spoke the truth and he didn't compromise his faithfulness to God the Father. And it's, it's interesting too, when you just analyze Paul early in his years, uh, he made it a point to try to get to Rome deliberately because he, he knew that's where the leaders were. Yes. And on his way there, he almost influenced one that said, that almost makes me to be a Christian because Paul was relentless in his service to Christ. That's what we're supposed persuaded. to be. Yes, sir. Yes. Let me give you another scripture, Rick, uh, for the queerest that talked about uh, 
uh, how should we behave? Uh, first Timothy, you're talking about Paul. First Timothy chapter two and verse one. Watch this. This is going to help all of us because uh, as we think about just some of the things that are going on politically in our world, uh, we got to stay focused on Christ. Paul says, to, right into Timothy, I, first Timothy two and one, one and two. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Rick, does all men mean all mankind? Yes, sir. <laughs> so we need to pray for everybody. I ain't going to pray for him. I can't stand him. The Bible says pray for everybody. Verse two, for kings and for all that are in authority. Does all that are in authority, Rick, mean everybody that has authority? <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Why is this important? Uh, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior. So pray for our country. Pray for our leaders. But most importantly, you lead a good and peaceable life to not be a stumbling block to anybody. That's how we live as pilgrims. Doc, a perfect compliment to that, and you hit it on the head. A perfect compliment compliment to that was uh, what Paul said in Ephesians 6. He said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. And the whole context, the context of that is we're supposed to take these things to our spiritual high powers. In other words, who we serve is God. We're supposed to pray to him. It's not us versus man. It's, it's spiritual wickedness in high places. Yes, that's right. And the only uh, antidote for that is the power of God. That's right. Any other questions, Rick, before we go into announcements, brother? We're getting, we're getting a lot of welcomes to our new sister. That's beautiful. That's, That's been excellent. the only question. Other than that, it's, and, and also prayers for people that are under the weather, like uh, Shirley and Mary Slocum. Absolutely. Uh, as we go into announcements, if there's any prayer requests, please go ahead and start putting those in. We'll go over a qu few quick announcements. I don't know if Brother Lindsay's in, if he's with us tonight. Is Brother Lindsay, if he is, let's go ahead and unmute the other elder. We'll go through some quick announcements. Please put your prayer request in. And Rick, before we close, we'll make sure we address uh, the prayer request. Uh, in prayer. Mm -hmm. And then everybody, wait. Don't leave unless you're at work and you have to go. But let's spend a few minutes so everybody can welcome uh, and Ashley can see her brothers and sisters in Christ in just a minute. Brother Lindsay, you there, brother? Good evening, brothers and sisters. I'm still a little bit under the weather and so is Barbara, but we're, we're hanging in there. And uh, I'd like to say uh, welcome, Sister Ashley. Amen. Ashley, that's Lindsey Baker, Jr. He's one of the three elders at the Miami Gardens Church of Christ. And Lindsey, good to hear your voice. You sound strong, brother. Mm -hmm. uh, praying for you and, you and Barbara uh, to continue to get stronger. Uh, so amen. So we'll deal with, we'll deal with prayer requests, Rick. Uh, and we want them to keep coming in. We'll address those before we close out. Fair enough? Yes, sir. All right. So let's go through uh, any announcements you have, Rick, for the flock before we go through just a couple quick slides. <clears throat> 